Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to this cold shop. This is our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso FG that I'm very slowly turning into an overland camper. The biggest holdup in building this overland camper has been getting the engine to run. Now, when I bought this truck, it ran perfectly fine, and one day it decided not to. In the process of diagnosing and troubleshooting all of this, one of the items that I replaced was the injectors. And although number four was extremely difficult to get out, number two didn't quite come out cleanly. And though I was able to get the engine to run very briefly after I replaced the injectors, it was clear that injector number two was not seated properly. So today, I'm gonna try and fix that. <laughs> Well, step one of cleaning up the injector seat is clearly going to be removing the injector for about the 400th time. To get the injector out, start by removing the fuel return line. Then we can take a 17 mil wrench, pop the injector line off very carefully so you don't damage the return fitting. And then 18 millimeter wrench up here to loosen this so that we can rotate the fuel pipe up and out of the way. Now I'm going to throw a bolt in here just to protect the end of the fuel line and I'm going to grab two caps to put on the injector which I should have grabbed before. Cap on the injector main line and a cap on the return line. I also need to pop the electrical connection off, but you need to push down on this tab here and then you can pull the connector back. And then we need to remove the injector hold down clamp, which is 13. Now, I've taken these injectors out, like I said, a gajillion times. So everything in here comes apart nicely for me. If you have not pulled your injectors out, don't expect results like this. Your injector will not come out like that. Uh, once you get the injector out, make sure you keep the supply, the return, and the tip covered. Don't touch any of that. You don't want to get any dirt in any of those spots. Now to clean the surface where the injector contacts the top of the engine, which in this case is called the overhead, we need to use a special tool. I'll put a link in the video description to this one. It's not a complicated tool, but it is important that you get the right one. Or have the ability to make the one that you buy into the one that you need. This is about as basic a kit as you can buy. It comes with four cutters, a mandrel, and an Allen key to attach the cutter to the mandrel. Now, three of these cutters are flat and one is tapered. We need a tapered cutter. And by that, I mean, you can see this is not flat on the cutting surface. This matches up to our injector, which is also not flat on the tip. So with only having one choice of a tapered cutter, I have a bit of a problem. This cutter, is 17 by 21. That means that this is 17 and this is 21. That does not fit into the bore of the injector on the 4P10 engine. I know from test fitting this one, which is a flat cutter, that 19 is the diameter that I need. And you might ask, why didn't I just buy the right one? I might ask that too, but this one was inexpensive. I really only need one cutter and I have the ability to modify it. So let's go do that. Ugh, I don't like going outside in this. A couple quick passes on the old South Bend lathe and we should be good. So now that I've modified the 17 by 21 taper cutter into a 17 by 19 taper cutter, we can give it a try. But before we just go and shove this in the hole and start spinning it, there's two things I'm going to do. One, I'm going to stick the camera down in there, see what it looks like, so we can see what this has done afterwards. And number two, I'm going to coat the end of this in grease to capture anything that comes off instead of dropping down into the cylinder should stick to the tool. If you don't have one, I highly recommend 
getting yourself one of these little boroscope cameras. They're not expensive at all. And man, the things that you can see. So this is the base of the bore where the injector sits. And it really, it just sits on this inner ring here. And I can see a little bit of like carbon there. Another piece here. I don't think it makes it better if we get too much closer, but you can see there's a couple spots around here where it's, it's a little bit dirty. We can get pretty close, but we lose the focus because it's too close. But basically what I want to be doing is really just this inner ring here is what needs to be cleaned up. And that's what we're going to try and do next. And so now we have some before pictures. Let's see what we can do. It's probably cold enough in here that I could use any grease that I wanted, but uh, I'm going to use this Red Lithium Mobile SHC220 because it's pretty sticky stuff. Well, let's see what happens. So very carefully with our grease on there, we get this all the way down inside. And I'm not going to push very hard. This is a what are we, 19 mil. All I'm trying to do is just lightly scuff that surface. Let's pull it up and see what that looks like. That's snug. So looks like Got a good chunk of carbon there. Let's stick the camera back down inside and see how clean that looks now. All right, let's see what we look like down there now. Ooh, look at that. That inner ring there is super clean. That should have a much better chance of sealing properly and making sure that I have compression. Very nice. That was uh, far easier than I was expecting it to be. Let's stick injector number two back in. As they always say in the generic manuals, assembly is reverse of removal, for the most part. turn line back on. Now, hopefully, we have compression on cylinder two. Now I know that compression is not what is causing this engine not to start because I've proven that I don't have fuel pressure. With all the things that I've gone through, I did have one more idea of something to try. After that, I pretty much confirmed that it's my fuel pump. So let's try one more thing to see if we can get this to start. The only thing that I can think of that could be possibly causing this engine to not generate fuel pressure is if somehow, and it shouldn't happen, but if somehow we have an airlock inside the CP4 fuel pump. Now the way this fuel system is designed, that shouldn't happen. The electric pump down by the fuel tank is designed to push fuel all the way through the entire system if you ever run out of fuel. If you read the manual on how to start this engine after you've run out of fuel, there's no mention of cracking injectors or opening areas to bleed air out. The electric pump simply pushes new fuel in and it returns back to the tank. You can hear when you key on after you've had air in the fuel system, air bubbling back into the fuel tank. So I know it's pushing air back into the tank, which means it's pushing it out of the fuel system. But is there somehow, just somehow, where the pumping element of the CP4 pump has a little bit of an airlock. The difficulty in troubleshooting this is that this cap right here sits directly above the fuel delivery valve, which sits directly above the pumping element. If there's no fuel getting to the pumping element, it's not gonna go out and up to the fuel rail. The problem is the fuel line gets backfilled into the rail and back and down this line to the output of the pump. So this whole thing should be full of fuel, regardless of whether I have fuel here. There's no check valve other than the fuel delivery valve. So if I remove this cap, I'm gonna see fuel from this line here coming back down from the rail. So if I take this cap off, I'm likely to see fuel either way. That said, 
If I take this cap off and I remove the fuel delivery valve and there is no fuel underneath, maybe, just maybe, there's a little tiny airlock. This requires an E14 socket, but it's pretty simple to take off and check. Now, I do expect we're gonna see fuel coming out here, but if we don't, I won't be surprised. Be very careful underneath here. Fuel delivery valve. I can hear air going in and I can hear fuel coming out. Fuel delivery valve is most easily taken out with a pair of these clamps. So clearly, whether it was there before or not, we have fuel at the top of the pumping element. That means now we should not have an airlock if we did before. And this delivery valve, it just pops open and closed like that. So with fuel underneath it, there's fuel at the pumping element. We should now be able to put this back in knowing that there's fuel at the pumping element. Well, let's not put it in sideways though. That won't work very well. There's a little bit better angle. So we can see there's definitely full of fuel there. The fuel is coming from kind of the hole you can see in the base. That's where the piston is underneath there. It goes out this way. So as long as there's fuel on top of that piston, it should be able to push fuel out as long as it can generate pressure. Now we need to get this to sit in its little recess and stay there while I put the cap back on. Right there. If you're doing this, it's far easier to remove the O-ring and place it on the cap versus trying to thread the cap in through the O-ring. This lets you get the cap into position quickly before the delivery valve drops back out of place. A quick press in on the delivery valve will keep it in place for a few seconds, allowing you to get the cap on. Once the cap starts threading on, it prevents the delivery valve from dropping out of place. I am by no means expecting either of those things that I've done to allow the truck to start, but they were both things that one, I needed to do, and two, I just wanted to check. I'm gonna turn the key, let the fuel cycle through, and we'll give it a crank. I don't expect it to start. I'm also gonna have my scanner hooked up so I can attempt to read fuel pressure, just in case there's like a little spike in the beginning and then it drops off. I'll know that maybe the little bit of fuel that was in there created a bit of pressure, but maybe it's not getting in there. I'm pretty sure this is gonna make no difference at all. I think that pump is euchred. The other thing that I'm gonna keep an eye on when I'm cranking is listening to see if cylinder number two is quieter now. There was clearly a fst of compression that was coming out before. Hopefully with that cleaned up uh, injector base, seal contact area, we don't have that anymore. Well, let's see what we get with the first key on. Now, I'll leave you over here. I guess that's not really gonna make a difference because I've got the microphone on, so you won't hear any fuel circulating, but let's give it a try. So I can definitely hear air purging through the system. Oh, I can see fuel leaking here too. Hang on, let's fix that. That's interesting, because if it's been sucking air in there, that is right before the inlet of the pump that could make a difference for sure. Right, I've tightened up those. I actually tightened up those and those and that one and those two and that one. Uh, I'm not sure if that hose has shrunk or it's the change in temperature dropping, but I definitely was able to tighten all of those clamps a little more. That very well could lead to the pump sucking air. And if the pump has air in it because it's easier to pull air than fuel, it's not gonna create fuel pressure. So now I do have a little bit of hope that I may have just changed something that wasn't working properly before. All tails up and running. Fuel system should have no air in it now. Hopefully, hopefully that was the cause. I mean, I feel pretty dumb if it is, but hey, let's see what happens. I'm gonna give it a crank. Not expecting, oh, I'm gonna hit graph first. Not expecting to see a start, but hey, 
Here we go. Let's have a listen to the cylinder two as well. Holy crap! No way! Number four is leaking. Loose fuel clamps. That was it. Woo! Well, there's one of a couple things going on here. Either I'm an idiot or, well, no, wait, I am an idiot for not tightening up the fuel clamps, or the truck felt a little threatened when I put this on it last time. That said, I was about to spend a crap ton of money on a new fuel pump that I didn't need to buy. I'm really happy I gave it one more kick at getting this thing running. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Never give up. Woo!